Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Wow, and it's 23 hours and 10 minutes into the 28th day of November 2021, and we're beginning our observation vlog. This is the view you would see if uh, you were sitting where I was sitting. Typically, the view you see is uh, of me, and you're going to see that in a few minutes. Actually, a few seconds. Well, it is again. We're back. We're starting our vlog the way we usually start our vlog. Wanted to give you a bit of a perspective as how it, where I am, what I'm doing in terms of the observation. And so this is what goes on in between events. We have our uh, verbal essay. The essay is a rough draft. Uh, so it's not going to be in perfect form. There are always going to be mistakes in there. Uh, but anyways, uh, tonight's topic is still going to be uh, on Yvette Carnell's uh, perspective. And this is the ADOS, the American de uh, Descendants of Slavery. And we're going to talk about the whole called global sharecrop business. Because sharecropping was slavery. And it still is slavery. And the thing is, the share crop has not ended. This is why, uh, you know, it, uh, members of ADOS, and it, it's, I see them on Twitter, talking about their experience and why don't immigrants understand what's going on. Because they think they have a, a unique perspective, a perspective that someone else doesn't have. But because the, the whole sharecropping business is global, uh, other people do have the experience. They, they they understand. They were able to. This is why they come here. This is why they flee. Why do you, you know? Why do you think you have so many people crossing the border? That's because most of the states uh, south of us, the, in South America, even in Middle America, most of America, uh, you have uh, sharecropping as the standard economy. In other words, there are masters and there are slaves. Let me get my phone and turn it off. And so you have a situation in which the sharecropping business is global. And to sort of explain this is that uh, uh, you, uh, well, I've got these cans of peaches. That's an odd horn. Sounds like a steam train. We never think we can hear any more. Oh, there's something there, but I don't know what it is. I think I can hear a steam engine, but not really too sure because what we heard before was a steam whistle. Most horns on the trains are. Uh, pneumatic, they run right air, but they're not whistles. And what we heard was the whistle. And typically an indication of steam. Anyways, uh, slavery 
we can't talk about it in the past tense, past tense because it's not over. And I said, I've got these uh, pan, uh, cans of peaches, and the peaches are grown in Greece. And you go look at, the, at Greece and what Greece produces, you'll find that Greece does not produce its own products. What it does is a share, Greece, the entire economy of Greece is a share crop system where they produce for Spain, Italy. And so a large chunk of your oil, you get olive oil, there's nice olive oil. Well, a large chunk of it's actually coming from Greece. It's not coming from Spain or from Italy. It comes from Greece. And the Greece, Greece is the sharecroppers. And so what happens is that the sharecropping still goes on, even in very high level areas. And Greece is not allowed to sell into the so-called common market. They are forced by the regulations of the EU to sell into the share crop market. In other words, there is a board that they have to sell to. They cannot sell into the open market. And then the board sets the price and sells into the open market. In other words, the bo- what the board gives the farmer is never enough for the farmer to pay off his debts. In other words, in order for the, for the farmer to have the crop, he has to go to the government, get a loan from the uh, typically what we call the Department of Agriculture. And then with the profits he makes uh, from, the, <clears throat> from the crop that he produces, he has to pay the loan, the agricultural loan back. The thing is, they, they never make enough money in terms of the actual payment out to end up paying out paying off the debt. So they're perpetually in debt. This is what we see actually with tax taxation is that uh, as these debts rise, that people are, are perpetually in debt. The entire uh, government system, the entire, the entire uh, perspective of the government is that we are slaves to be worked in a debt situation that only a select few will be allowed to sort of rise above the rest and uh, uh, this is their nature of what they call the shared economy. And this is what you often hear uh, the, the, uh, one of the guys that uh, Yvette talks about is Anthony. I went and looked at his stuff. He's a, 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 a professor at, uh, uh, ha, uh, at uh, ha, uh, Howard uh, University. And uh, oh, he's like most professors who are even into, into these, they're, they're who are in these colleges, they're typically socialists. And they'll say, oh, it's a shared economy. Well, and then they, they, they talk about being, having a planned economy. Well, they're kind of glossing over a lot of realities there, is that the share is not open. It's determined by a government board, like a wheat board or dairy board. So what happens here? Is that there's a dairy board, there's a wheat board, there is uh, a, an agricultural board in general. And of course, these boards were became you know, out of favor. So this is what you see with our avocados. And so in avocados now, you have something known, even with coffee and, and, and cocoa, you have responsibly sourced. You have a fair trade system or a co-op system. But the whole the whole concept of fair trade is nothing more than a, a replacement for the old board and the old that fair trade system that board the co-op doesn't actually share the money that it gets from the sale of a crop with the farmer again they get a sort of an allotted amount but the thing is because you've got more bureaucracy uh, in a new agency and they they bring up the nice faces oh everyone's sharing in the wealth and Again, it's rhetoric. The, the whole concept of the shared economy is nothing more than rhetoric. It's not reality. And so what happens is you, you, you see people who you know, talk about ADOS and how the government has to do this and the government has to do that, but the reality, you look at what the reality of the government actually is. Look at the reality of socialism. So why aren't the Democrats sort of you know giving what they promise? Because what they're promising is this whole rhetoric thing 
about the shared economy they have no intention of sharing. You look at the history of this, you'll see that there is no, no actual sharing of the economy. They're taking the money from themselves. This is what they talk about share, sharecropping. It's supposed to be a co-op. It should be that, oh, we're against corporation. We don't want to make money. Well, the people on the boards do. So what happens is essentially these farmers become slaves. They have to produce money at, a, at, at, at any amount uh, dictated by, um, by a particular board. This is a given example here. Uh, this is one of these current examples. that Everyone's noticing the price of beef or the price of chickens. You want to go eat? There you go. Here's your, here's your new prices. Well, are the are, is is the farmer making that money? Is, is, is oh, it's the farmer. Oh no, it's the board. Is these boards saying? And this was this was was tweeted by several different farmers. Uh, uh, and, and going to the, some of these some of these farm uh, 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 the agricultural uh, areas of Twitter, and they'll talk about this. You'll see them talking about this. How they're not getting the money from the from the board. The board has raised the prices, but the farmers are not getting anything more. In other words, the whole issue of the beef shortage has nothing to do with the farmer. It has to do with the board. And as these bureaucrats, who either have botched everything on a level of incompetency that is absolutely staggering, or they're ripping people off. They're they're there deliberately to rip people off to create a crisis. And more likely to, to me is that you have a combination of the two, is there are people who are completely incompetent on the board, but at the same time, they're getting a lot of money, They're getting and, and they want to continue along with this whole, again, it's this whole concept of, vast, of the vast estate once you start getting enough of a piece of the pie. And I know, personally know people who are part of the government and, and they're doing this. They're, big, they're making uh, six, seven, seven, six, seven, six, six, the seven-figure salaries, and it's all on government time. And they have no problems taking money. And they consider themselves to be good people. I'm a good person. Well, you're taking from you're taking money that's not yours. I mean, where do you think this money's coming from? And the thing is, is that, that you can sort of you you can sort of see what's going on. There's, this is what happens with the avocados. This is what happens with almost every farm program where you have a socialist in, in there. And they have these engineering plans, these, share, these, these shared economy plans that the, the farmer is getting ripped off. You, they, they're, they're creating their own sense of reality. This, again, this is Edward Bernays, where, where you create the environment, you create the work, you create the narrative. And the people down below won't really matter. And unfortunately, the people who are, who are ADOS, specifically, the, we're talking specifically about blacks now, because there are a lot of different cultures. There's, there's the Hispanic, there's, the, you know, the United States has been practicing regime change uh, in South America uh, almost consistently for the, for the last uh, 40 to 50 years. The first regime change that you would say in uh, the in uh, the sort of called the current American history was the I think it was 1950 with the overthrow of the, the Guatemalan government. Uh, they did the same thing to Mossadegh and Iran. I and mean, so what happens? The United States since World War II has been meddling in different countries uh, in terms of regime changes, setting up these sort of called dictatorships uh, for decades now. It's not something new. And this is why you have a lot of the sort of so-called migration. The migration is these migrants aren't coming because, oh, you know, we just want to come for a vacation. It's, you know, it's nice here, but you know, but we want something else. We'll, we'll, we'll walk the whole way or, or we'll ride a train. We'll, you know, we'll do things that are very dangerous. No, it's because the whole system has collapsed. They don't have the healthcare system. They don't have the, you know, I mean, the, 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 the tourists will have something. But the people themselves don't have anything. And th this is, you know, watching some of the vlogs I watch, you know, some one of the vlogs of the, the, the person from Cuba. And you can see how the mentality, once they're free, once they're able to make the money they want, they're not going to go and share with other people because they earned it. They worked hard for this. 
and I think that other people in the United States can do the same thing. And so when the, some someone thought that, thought, thought, turns around and talks about reparations and ADOS, says, whoa, we're Cuban. What do you think the Americans did to the Cubans? And so what happens, the argument of DDoS in terms of reparation falls flat because other people had, and this is, this is outside the Greeks and the Syrians, which are one sort of example of that, but you have the Armenians, you have uh, 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 the Iranians, the Persians are, have experienced this because the United States, it's the United States who overthrew Mossadegh was the Iranian president. Uh, and when you, they overthrew Mossadegh, they installed their own king called the Shah, the Shah of Iran. And you can go look in the history and, and, and see how this kind of plays out. And you'll see that the United States has been sort of involved in these different governments uh, in the Middle East for a very long time. You could find the same thing in Africa. The, the African elections are not fair and free. It's not who the African people want. It's who is approved by the European governments. And when, as long as the 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 black uh, presidents of Africa, these these actual Africans, as long as they're paying their dues and behaving like the proper vassal king, they can be leader. As soon as they turn around and snub the West and say they're going to work on their own, that's when the regime can, comes in. Oh, this person is a dictatorship. He look at what he's doing to his people. And they begin to work and change that. We we saw this with um, the invasion of Iraq, the the uh, weapons of mass destruction that came out there. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. You had um, uh, 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 then Secretary of State Colin Powell. This is under, and Colin Powell was initially Secretary of State under Clinton, and then was kept on by Bush in the first in the first uh, term, and holding up the anthrax and say, "Oh, look." Weapons of mass destruction. He had this, had this time to live off. This is anthrax. Do you know what a drop of this could do? And it scared enough people. And this is the beginning. This was the entrance into the Iraq War. Well, they got the Iraq War. They got in there. They destroyed Iraq, and they didn't find any weapons of mass destruction. And then the, 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 this is the nature of the of what's been going on globally in the sort of called, basically is, is global. Global slavery, global sharecropping, and it's everywhere. And this is why you'll never actually see reparations in terms of for the, for the black ADOS. They'll never see reparations because there's so many people, if they did that, and who, who can claim reparations, then they would never be able to finish paying off. But they, they, they will select these, this is what you'll see with the Democrats, they talk about visible minorities. Unless you're properly visible and, and, and are approved of as a minority by the higher up, by this elite within the Democrat Party, and the thing is, these are the same elite people, these uh, super delegates. Who do you think chose Biden? It wasn't the people of the Democratic Party. It was a super super delegate. The super delegate said, "You're going to vote Biden," and the, the Democrats said, "Okay, thank you very much. We're going to vote Biden." They didn't choose Biden. Their choice was initially was, was Bernie Sanders. But time and time again, you'll see this with, uh, with Clinton and now uh, with Biden, that it, it, when, uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders did his duty. And when it came time to step aside, he stepped aside and rolled over and played next because he's part of the system. He understands this. A large chunk of the people who, who, who voted for him don't understand this. They don't understand the work. They don't understand this sort of, you know, the sort of Edward Bernays, where the they're creating an environment, they're creating a cause, they're creating an issue that people can get behind and say, "Oh yes, I'm going to vote for this because I'm voting for change." Well, all they're voting for is change in their pockets because that's all you're going to be left with after the Democrats are done. They're going to take as much as they can, as, you know, and you're not going to be left with anything. This is what people are saying so, you know, as they're going into. The next series of lockdowns, which, which which conveniently came a little bit before Omicron. Oh, we're going into lockdown again. Well, why are we going into lockdown? Why are we why if we're double vaxxed, why are we wearing our masks? That's because you you have to do what we tell you to do. There wasn't any particular reason for. It. Then all of a sudden, as people started grumbling, along, along comes Omicron. <laughs> I call it Omicron. 
because that's what it is. It's not. It's there. There was no reality behind it. There was in physics years ago. This was when I was an undergrad. There was this, a group of scientists, and the first thing they did is they came out with the newspapers and did a press conference and announced cold fusion. Ironically enough, their names were the the two, sci- the two lead sci- scientists were named Pons and Fleischmann. Pons is a is a cold cream like uh, 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 that you would put on your face <laughs> for whatever to, to moisturize your face. And Fleischmann, of course, everyone knows this as a, a type of margarine, you know, a butter type, a butter product. Well, this was the names of these two particular scientists, and they stood up and announced uh, cold fusion. But of course. They didn't do it in the journals. They, they did it in, on TV. Uh, but as the researchers sort of looked at their apparatus and was sort of be able to able to figure out what, how they put their apparatus together, sat back and realized, and particularly when they published their so-called finding in terms of radiation, that they had missed they had missed sent their uh, their uh, their radiation detector, and rather than finding excess amount of radiation, they were simply recording background radiation, normal background radiation, but didn't realize it and thought it was something new. And so they published everything based on that. It's not until someone went back and said, hey, wait a minute, this is simply background radiation. Everything kind of fell apart. Their funding fell apart and out it went. And now this whole thing of cold fusion, that was shut down by the government. They didn't, the, 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 the big corporations, of power, the big power corporations, didn't want this to come through, and so it was shut down. Oh, I mean, here you go again. Big tech, big this, big pharma. Uh, there's any anytime you hear someone come big this, without having an identity of who's actually the big, who what are the components of the big. Again, you're looking at a work. You're looking at something, the, something that's basically within the classics, classic understanding of Edward Bernays. That the whole thing, the system, the cause is being created. It's not necessarily real. You're hearing a lot of rhetoric. Otherwise, you'd see very specific things. And the thing is, is that the only way to get around this, the, the only way to sort of deal with it, but this is also very difficult, you have to walk away from the government. You have to sit down and say, okay, I'm not participating in this anymore. And this is, most people will not do that. They will not risk their jobs. They will not risk their environment. They will not risk anything in order to have a better world. It's what they want for themselves first, and then everyone else comes along. And this is what sort of Yvette Carnell, in terms of, in, in terms of how she's seeing other people within ADOS, you know, they're coming into our game. They're, take, they're, they're shoehorning in. Why? Because they get in there, they, 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 they move the government, they create a cause, and then they're gone. They, they take it once they get enough money from themselves. But that's what it is. That's the whole name of the game. The government will not give you anything, any money, unless, of course, there is some degree of political return. And this is kind of the nature of things. Anyways, this is the end of uh, tonight's session. I think I'm going to leave the Nosey's vlog to another point, another time, uh, because I do have to go inside. I'll might be coming back out a little bit uh, to see if I can uh, do the next part, but we'll see what happens. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.